Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Amanda Ensing. Welcome to my beauty space. I'm gonna be showing you guys today how I edit my Instagram pictures. This is definitely one of the most requested videos that I get asked for. I did one, it was like a year, maybe three years ago on my second channel, but I wanted to do an updated video on how I edit them so you guys can see the apps that I use and the method that I use to get my selfies. I'm gonna go through and edit a picture with you so you can see how I do it. Before I get into that, I wanna give you guys a few little tips and tricks. Number one, lighting is everything. Lighting really makes or breaks a photo. I have lots of professional lighting that I use for my videos and tutorials, but I will tell you guys that no matter how much money you spend on lighting, daylight is your best friend. If nothing beats natural light. It's always gonna be the best lighting to take your pictures, especially when it comes to makeup and fashion, just because it really emphasizes everything and it's just perfect. Always try to avoid direct sunlight. Direct sunlight can be too harsh. If you can't get sunlight, try to get a light bulb that is more fluorescent daylight. You don't want anything too yellow because then your pictures are gonna show up yellow. And then just make sure your camera settings are cooler. I know on my Sony, I usually turn the temperature down to a little bit more blue so that way everything's not super orange. That's just the way I like my pictures more cool than really, really warm because I feel like when it's really warm, my skin can look orange. Tip number two, know your angles. This is another thing. We all have a good side. Like, I feel like this is the side I usually take my pictures on. It's just my more comfortable side. On this side, I feel like my nose looks weird, so I don't really ever take pictures from this side. I always take from this side. Also, I have a bigger forehead. I have a five head, so I like to take my pictures from lower so my forehead looks smaller versus if you hold your camera up higher, it's gonna make your forehead look bigger. So if you have a double chin, maybe higher. If you have a bigger forehead, maybe lower. It's all up to preference. I also like that when I hold it lower, it makes my top lip look a little bit more plump. Whenever I'm posing, I also kind of do this because it shows your collarbone decolletage and I usually highlight so it shows it off really nicely. And then whenever I'm posing, I just try to kind of smirk a little bit and squint my eyes. You wanna smize, which means smile with the eyes if you didn't know. So I just kind of like to bring that emotion through my eyes as much as I can. It just takes practice. Like taking a good selfie just takes practice and it's uncomfortable at first and it's weird at first. I've taken so many photos of myself over the past couple years doing social media that I'm used to my angles and I know what I like. So I know that it's hard and literally for me, I've been doing this for years and there are still days that I cannot get a good picture to save my life. So some days you just have those, but all it takes is trying a different angle, different outfit, different lighting, and you can like, once you get it, you're like, that's the photo. Just like selfies with outfit pics, angles are everything. An outfit can look great in real life and then you take a picture and you're like, why do I look like this? This is not how I look. In my photos, I look really tall. In real life, I'm 5'1". To look taller, you wanna angle the camera downwards. So when I'm taking a mirror pic, I'll kind of tilt it so that way I look taller, I'll hold it lower. If someone else is taking it for me, I just have them get a little bit lower. Make sure to tuck your chin in when someone's lower so it like doesn't show your double chin or make you look like you have a double chin. And then that way it just makes you look so tall and elongated. And I like to pop my hip out so that I look extra curvy. And then I put one leg in front of the other and it just makes you look so tall. I love it. If you don't like that look, you can always have someone hold the camera upwards. It's gonna make you look a little bit shorter, but it's also more of like a perspective photo if you want someone to feel like they're right above you. So. Tip number three is that you don't need an expensive camera to have a bomb Instagram feed or to get amazing photos. Most of my photos on my Instagram are just taken with my iPhone. I have the iPhone 7. Phones nowadays have amazing cameras. Like I had a video, a couple videos back that I filmed the whole video on my iPhone. You just have to know how to get the lighting and how to edit with filters to really enhance everything, which is what I'm gonna show you when I edit. But you don't have to have an expensive camera to have a nice feed. Tip number four, don't be afraid to ask someone to take a picture for you. If you're wanting to take an outfit picture, like a fashion, maybe you've got some cute ice cream or something, and you just wanna take a picture, don't be afraid to ask someone and make sure you tell them exactly how you want your photo. It's more common than you think. I've been stopped before, someone asking me to take a picture of her and you could clearly tell it was for Instagram. Like, I don't mind. Normally people don't mind. If they do, just 
just ask someone else. Make sure you tell them how you want it. Something that saves my life when taking pictures on my iPhone is using the burst option. All you do is hold down the button to take the picture and it takes like a hundred pictures. So you just hold it down. And what I'll do is I'll have someone that's taking a picture of me use a burst and I'll just move. So I'm taking a picture outfit, I'll move, do different things. And then you can go through and select the pictures that you like. That way you get lots of different angles without having to push it every single time. And it's a fluid movement. Sometimes the pictures come out blurry, which I like. I feel like the blurry, like when your hand, it just looks more candid and I really like that. So that's another thing that saves me. So now let's get into how I edit my Instagram pictures. Whenever I'm picking out a picture that I wanna edit, I like to save it to my favorites. So the first app that I go into is Facetune 2. I like this way better than the first one. So what I like to do is I keep all the pictures I wanna edit in my favorites tab, so that way I can just click it from here. If you don't know how to do favorites, photo album, um, you can go to a picture, click the little heart, it'll save it to your favorites tab. Okay, so I already have the picture pulled up. This is a picture I took with my iPhone in New York. Great quality, I'm telling you guys, I use my iPhone for most of my pictures. So the only thing I wanna do is change the color, make it whiter, make it a little bit more bluer. I like bluer tones in my pictures. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to whiten the background. So right here is the whiten tool. The cool thing about Facetune 2 as well, I actually bought all of the presets because there's some really great ones. Um, there's also a black and white tool, which you can slide like this and change the intensity. On Facetune 2, you get to change the intensity, which I really, really love. So the first thing I do is I go into whiten and I'm going to whiten everything. Once you start, I like to turn it all the way up so that way I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to whiten all around. It's gonna look crazy at first. So it looks crazy, right? So now I'm gonna zoom in. Whenever you click the erase tool right here, it shows you what is whitened. You just wanna make sure that you don't get your skin. The difference between this and the black and white tool is that the whiten actually brightens it a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so now I go to the dial and here I'm going to pick how intense I want my whiten. So I'm gonna go for this picture just about right here and then hit the little check mark. So with these, I'm not crazy about how they're in color. So now I'm gonna go in with the black and white tool. I'm going to go right here and just tap. Kind of like that, so it's all uniform in color. So I'm gonna leave it like that. So the next thing I like to do after I work on the background is I will go to the tools tab. And this is one of my favorite things on this entire app and it's called Darkroom. The light tool is amazing. So I like to go to the light tool and it will add so much light to your picture. I like it a lot better than brightness, even though I do brighten my pictures a little bit. So I'm just going to add, usually I don't go past, I would say about 15 to 20, just depends on the picture because it can make your skin look weird. So I'm gonna take mine to 15. Um, you can see the difference between bright and so as I use brightness, it's totally different than light. So for brightness, I'm just gonna add seven. And then sometimes I'll go in with vibrance and temperature. If you feel like your picture is too warm, you can bring it down. I'll bring it down to four. Um, and then that's all I'm gonna do in dark room. But I love, like you can see the difference already between the picture. Okay, so it looks a lot more cleaner already. So now I'm gonna go into the Vibrance tool, which is an, another tool that I love. I actually look kind of tan here, but usually I will go over my skin and tap. And then on this, I'm just going to bring it up just a tiny bit, usually about 15 to 20 again. And then I'm gonna erase a little bit right here because it looks too orange. Another tool they have that is really cool is the Fix Shadow tool. So how there's so much shadow here, you can tap the fixed shadow. Sometimes this doesn't work, but usually on outdoor shadows, it works really well. So you can see how it really brightens up that shadow area. Now, if your skin or anything is too warm, you can go to cool down. And on this, I'm gonna show you, you can go over how my skin looked a little bit warm, see how warm it looks. I can bring it up just, like you can see how dull it looks. I can bring it up just a little bit to take away some of the red and orange and we're Gucci. Next, I like to go in and see if I have any blemishes. Sometimes I'll hide some, so I have one right here. So for this, I like to go to the patch tool. I don't like to smooth. If you just smooth it, it looks like a smooth patch. So for this, I'm gonna tap right on the area and then you go to an area similar. 
And on here, I go to um, softness and I bring it down because if you bring it up, it's still there. So I like to make it softer. Opacity is at 100. Hit OK. Um, also have one right there. These are just little things you can't even see from far away. Now I also have like, it looks like hair right here. So on that, I'm actually gonna smooth it out a little bit. So I always use a smooth, not the smoother, because the smoother is too intense. And on this, I'm just kind of tapping and dragging. And I usually bring it about, not all the way, about right there. So I'm gonna darken up my roots a little bit where the sun is. So on this, I like to go to the paint tool. So on here, I like the skin or the tone because they're softer. So I'll hit the black and just kind of tap. You can also go in, sometimes I'll go in and darken my eyeliner. I mean, the difference is very subtle. You probably don't even notice, but it's little things that I notice. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go in with a glow tool. Glow tool is right here. So on this, I like to highlight any glow that I have. So like on my chest area, how it's like already glowing from the sun, you see how it just makes it a little bit more vibrant. Um, usually I put a little bit on my cheekbone, but you can't see my highlight here, so I'm gonna leave that alone. You can also go on jewelry, so you can tap your jewelry and it makes it glow even more, which is cool. Maybe on my watch and on my sunglasses. So that looks really good to me. I always like to go in with the details tool, which is right here, just to sharpen up anything. So like my necklace, my earrings, maybe sunglasses, lashes, um, my outfit. Also, you can do your hair, adds more texture. And this, I don't go all the way because it gets really grainy. I like to go maybe no more than 40. So that looks pretty dang good. I'm happy with it. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to save it to my camera roll. So now I'm gonna go in with my second favorite app. I pretty much just use Facetune 2 and Visco Cam. These are my two favorite. I actually just got a few more filters, but the ones that you get for free are perfect. I've been using the free ones up until like a couple days ago. So some of my favorite filters on Visco are A5, I love, and you tap it again so you can control the vibrancy. Like that is sick. I love blue in my pictures. A6 is also really pretty if you want more of like the vintage feel. F2 is pretty, F1 is pretty. These are at full capacity, I never do it at full capacity. Love HB1, love HB2. That one is beautiful, I might use HB2 with the black. Um, I also have been liking, these are newer, I haven't played with them. I like the Qs, if I can find them. The Qs are really cool. I love T1, that's like a fade filter. Really, really nice. HB2 is really beautiful. It just makes the blacks very vibrant and blue. So I'm gonna bring my filter. The max I do it is usually around six. Next, I like to go over to this tab and I always go over to shadows tint and I tend to make my shadows more blue because my hair has more blue and I like to really pull that out. Usually with these, I only bring it about one or two max. So you can kind of pick how much you want. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Another tool I love on here is the Clarity and Sharpen. They make your picture so sharp. So I'm gonna go to Clarity. I'm gonna bring this up to about two. You can sharpen as well. Just be careful because it saves a little bit sharper than it has on here, I noticed on mine. So let's do 0.6. All right, we're good. And I mean, that's it. I feel really good with this picture. That's all I wanna do. Probably seem like a lot, but I think that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and save to my camera roll. We're gonna talk about Unum. This is a newer app that I downloaded. This shows you the aesthetic of your Instagram page so you can see how your pictures will look. So these are the pictures that I posted so you can see how it looks. I'm going to tap and I'm gonna add the one that we edited. I haven't cropped it yet, but you can get an idea of what it will look like on your feed. With this, you can add tons of pictures and kind of move them around if you're going for a theme or you wanna see how your pictures will look together. So this is Unum, it's a really cool app. So in my camera roll, I'm actually going to crop the side of the photo a little bit. So now I'm in Instagram, I'm gonna add the photo. I'm gonna hit the little triangles to make it as small as it can be. So now I'm going to crop it a little bit more and then I'm gonna hit next. So now this is on the Instagram edit. I'm going to hit edit right here and go to adjust. Usually I will try to tilt it the way that I'm standing just so it seems like you're actually there in person. So for this one, if you wanna look a little bit taller, you wanna tilt it this way to the positive numbers. If you wanna look more above, you tilt it this way. So I am going to tilt it, I think a little bit up because I'm like standing there. So it seems like you're right above me. So just like that. 
So that's pretty much all I do in Instagram. If I add anything with the filters, I'll, I will sharpen or add color right here. I always like to add more of the dark blue, but that's it. And then I'm done. So if you hit next, I can go back, save it as a draft, post it whenever I'm ready to post. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a makeup selfie. So I'm going back to Facetune and my favorites, let's do this one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is zoom in to my face and see if there's anything I wanna smooth or patch. And again, I'm just using my patch tool and I turn the softness down. Then I'm gonna go in and just smooth right here. So now I'm gonna go in to my paint tool. Paint is right here. I'm just gonna darken my lashes a little bit and I'm getting right up in here to darken up the lash band. That's the thing with the iPhone. Again, I took this photo with my iPhone. It can take away a lot of the color and this is just a subtle difference, but it's something that I notice and doing this kind of helps bring back the vibrancy and the color. The most questions I get is how do you get your makeup to show up on camera when you're using iPhone or camera? This really helps. I'm also gonna go to the white and just tap on my highlight, which you can already see it, but it just intensifies it a little bit. Don't need to do that one. Also, I'm gonna go into the very part of my eye right here where it's already like there's a little reflection and I'm gonna tap the white. You don't wanna go crazy and add things that aren't in the picture, but just enhancing it, I don't see anything wrong with it. It just adds a little subtle glow. I'm gonna turn it about right there, so not full blast. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the glow tool. Glow my necklace a little bit. Also, I'm wearing gloss, so you can see where I have this highlight. I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit. So going back to the paint tool, so I wanna fix the shadow a little bit because I didn't have enough light. So I'm gonna go to the picker tool and I'm gonna pick right under my eyes where it's lighter. So now I'm gonna go to skin and I'm just gonna lightly tap right here to fix the shadow. You can use the shadow tool, but for this type of instance, I think this is more accurate. See how it just brings that out a little bit? Looks a little bit better, a little bit more evenly lit. Next, I want to detail my eyes. So I'm gonna go to the details tool. You can use sharpen, it's just a lot more harsh. I just wanna detail my lashes and my eyes. This makes the lashes just really stand out. I love that. Um, you can even go on the necklace and this I'm going to bring about right there is good. So my skin looks a little bit pale here. I don't think the vibrance is gonna bring it out. So I'm gonna show you another little trick. Going back to paint, I'm gonna pick a skin tone. So I'm gonna go to this one right here. Now I don't want it to be this harsh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to paint this all over my skin. And then on the face, I just tap. I don't want it to be too intense. On my hand, I'm gonna tap. So you can see it just adds just the, the slightest bit of color. It's nothing crazy. It adds a little bit more color to my skin because I was looking pretty off. The iPhone definitely washes out color. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Um, another tool, I'm not gonna be able to really show you how I use it because I'm wearing gloss, but I will do it anyway so you can get an idea. So the matte tool, I love this for matte lipsticks. If you ever get a shine on your lipstick and it's matte in real life because of the lighting, you can use this. Well, I can't use it on here. And it completely turns your lipstick into a matte before, after, before, after. Cool, huh? So next I'm gonna go in with my whiten tool and I'm gonna whiten the background. I always do this in all of my pictures. Again, I turn it all the way up so I can see what I'm doing. I'm usually a little bit more careful, but for this video, I wanna go through it quite quickly for you guys so you're not like bored to death. Now, since this is more gray, I'm going to bring it up almost all the way right there. So now I'm gonna go into dark room. I love dark room. So I'm gonna add a little bit, a little bit of light. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna add a little bit of light taking it at 12. Let's see how vibrance looks. And you can play around. If you don't like it, then don't do it. I'll bring the vibrance up to four and I'm gonna bring my satura saturation, I can't talk, down to. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my camera roll. Go in to Visco Cam. Now I'm gonna add my filter. I already know A5 is gonna look good. I love A5, It's oh, I just love the blue with the black. Okay, let's see what else, just in case. Let's look at HB2. I used that the last time too. I really like that filter. It makes the blacks look really rich. Gonna go into my shadows tint. We're gonna use blue. I'm gonna bring it up to 1.5. Now I'm gonna go in to clarity. Let's do 1.4. And then I'm gonna leave it like that. 
The cool thing about ViscoCam 2 that you can do is, let's say I had a picture like this that I wanted to have the same color. So I'm gonna add this photo again, which was this one. So let's say I this was a different photo. So you can tap the one you just edited, go to Copy Edits, and then I can go here and hit paste edits. So if you have multiple photos with the same kind of theme, they, it's the exact same photo and you don't have to go through editing them all over again. I love that. So going to Instagram, this photo doesn't fit, it's too big. So my options are to crop it, move it around, or you can go to this app called InstaSize right here. So on this, you can make it with the white borders. So if I want it to be full, I can upload it like this. You can also zoom it a little bit if you don't want it all the way. Now you can do the white borders, you can do a color. Um, you could also go to the borders tab. You can also use a photo. So you can use a photo like plain or blurred. So if you hit the blur, you can pick any photo you want and it'll add it with blurred corners. So that is another little trick. Also, there are really cool filters on this app as well. Um, I like the Lux, it makes your blacks even blacker, like, or you can go backwards and it fades. So you can fade or go blacker, which is really cool. It's a really, really cool app. An app I use sometimes is Rookie Cam. Rookie Cam, I like to add light filters to my pictures and the sun was right here, but it doesn't show up on camera. So if you want it to look more like you're outside, you can go to filters and go to the warm light tab. So I'm gonna go to twinkle, tap it again. I don't want the filter, so that goes all the way down. I just want the sun. This little button here, you can change the rotation and also pick if you want like a little bit of light in the corner. There you go. And the filters are really beautiful on this too. Again, this has vibrancy and a lot of different things as well. I do notice with this app though, it takes away a little bit of the quality of your picture. So I don't use it as much anymore, but this used to be one of my go-to apps. So those are all my secrets to how I edit my Instagram pictures. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I'll link the apps I use down below in the description bar in case you forgot anything. Um, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like this video. And don't forget to subscribe down below. Don't you leave my channel without subscribing. I would love to have you join my A-team, my YouTube squad, my YouTube family. You guys are my life, I love you. Okay, I love you, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.